Um, as a child, I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> black made back, white seats, black piping. Remind me of Paul McCartney and Mike fighting. <laughs> you feel that? All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Maybach Conversations. And today we have the beautiful Dr. Fuller in the building. And this woman is absolutely amazing. Not only is she a doctor, she's a psychiatrist. She's the co-founder of Accelerated Clinical Trials, which where we are right now. And also she's a sex therapist. So maybe she'll be able to help some of the guys and ladies out today with uh, that topic. So, uh, Dr. Fuller. Hey, thank how you, are Trey. You? I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you again. Good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> We go back years, yes. so we've known each other for a long time. And when well, you were selling Beats headphones, I was selling Beats <laughs> headphones. A long, that's a long time ago, yes, but it was yes. that was a it was a great position. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank You've been you. excellent. You've done a lot of work, and I've seen you when you was doing what clinicals or yep. When I was in medical schools, when we met medical mm -hmm. schools. So now you big boss. They got your own company. That is correct. Making all the money. Make a little something. Uh, I feel <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. Thank so, you. Um, so tell the people where are you from and how did you grow up? Absolutely. So originally <laughs> from Washington D.C., but I was a military brat. Okay. So I grew up in places like Guam, Hawaii, Japan, Italy, just kind of all over. So a very diverse and broad background. Mm. Um, and Guam, so Guam and Japan. How was how was that? It was going amazing. Up? Really? It was absolutely. Because most amazing. people will never go there, and you know. It was different and it was a very strict culture, mm -hmm. but it was a diverse okay. and good food. Japan has some of the, the most amazing food I've ever mm -hmm. eaten. So mm -hmm. if you ever get an opportunity, I would definitely recommend going to Japan. Really? Yes, so absolutely. So I should put that on the bucket list? Top 10. Okay. Is it Konnichiwa? <laughs> yes, Konnichiwa. <laughs> That's exactly what they say. That is Japanese. That's correct. Even though I don't know much Japanese, but yes, that is Japanese. Okay, so you grew up all around the world. Grew up all around the world, correct. So you didn't. You you came from a, a family of. It wasn't a struggle how you grew up. You came. No, up with... I mean, I my parents weren't wealthy, but I definitely grew up like upper middle class. My dad worked for the government. Um, mm. My mom ended up working for the government, mm. so I definitely was spoiled. Mm. Um, grew up in a family of educators and education. There was an emphasis on education. Okay. So I definitely knew that I always wanted to get a higher education, but never did I think that I would become a doctor. Really? No, I thought it was just too many years of school, and I didn't like school like that. I love learning, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between knowledge, wanting knowledge and learning and wanting to spend 15 years of your life mm. in school. So <clears throat> you didn't know you was going to be a doctor. So what did you want to be growing up as a child? Um, as a child, I wanted mm. to be a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> but <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, uh, but when man. I was a teenager, I wanted to actually be like a police officer or I wanted to be a, a school counselor. All right, guys, you know how important professional photography and videography is in real estate. And I take mine very seriously. The only company I trust is Visually Sold. And that's visuallysold.com. They have the best photographers. They've been shooting all of my photography videos for my real estate projects for years. Not only that, they have a next day delivery, instant booking online, and the quality is outstanding. Get your game up today and get 10% off your first photo or video shoot by using my code, which is Trey, T-R-E-Y, at visuallysold.com. And that is, again, Trey, at visuallysold.com. They will take care of you. Make sure you tell them that I sent you so I can get some future discounts on all of my stuff in the future. All right, guys, visuallysold.com. Check them out. They will not disappoint. One of the most professional services in the business. All right, I guarantee that. Now let's get back to the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. So originally I wanted to be a school counselor, but then when I got to college, I was like, wait a second, let me Google how much school counselors make. Mm. And they didn't make no money. Unfortunately, they should, mm. um, but they just don't. They're not compensated well for the job so I was like you know what I'll be a psychologist and I started working at a children's inpatient facility dealing mm. with like oppositional defiant disorder those are the kids like, that are out you know robbing stealing mm. typically because these are things that they have to do they're doing it for survival mm. um, working with kids that just came from low-income families or just really came from 
families where they weren't feeling like they were heard. So mm. they would come to the inpatient, get evaluations. And that's when I saw that there was a need for psychiatrists in the black community. And I was like, you know what, this is what I want to do. So those kids, they motivated me to do that. Wow. Mm -hmm. You still have ties with that? I don't. They shut down the facility, unfortunately. Really? But it was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. because so that's where I started. My nonprofit is actually geared towards helping young black males going through stuff like that, that's having to go through survival of robbing and, and mm -hmm. doing the bad stuff just to make it or survive. Right. I want to help give back through my nonprofit, which is called the Trey Williams Foundation, and that's our target audience. Congratulations. I appreciate that. That's so, needed, because you were a bad kid yourself. You know what? I, I wasn't bad, but I, I wasn't the best. I just, I mean, because my mom, she wouldn't allow for no bad. She, right. she would beat the shit mess out of us okay <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know don't play. She didn't play. so she went a lot for the bad but you know mm -hmm. just talking and acting up is you know but well, and that's the thing in our community resources right mm -hmm. so it's important for us to pour back into our community so that's one of the reasons why i was like you know when i become a psychiatrist i'm gonna make sure that i'm pouring back into my community volunteering telling people you know medical school yeah it's it's a lot of work it's expensive but the thing is like the opportunities that are presented to you and your you're getting to help another individual. Mm. You you can't beat that. It's yeah. endless. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you always had a great head on your shoulder. So, Thank you. so for what you're doing right now, that's amazing. I appreciate and, that. And I salute you on that. So, <clears throat> you're you're in college. You decide to become a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. What were some of your setbacks? Like becoming getting to where you are now. Mm -hmm. Did you have any obstacles or any setbacks? That stuff that held you back, like that you can talk about? You know, I think the biggest thing, besides the entrepreneurship, but just like the medical school, that route was so long because mm. I did four years of a bachelor's and then I did two years of a master's because I was unsure of what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, became a sex therapist and there was really nothing at the time that I could do with that. I didn't even know what I wanted to do with that. It was like a <laughs> subspecialty that I was interested in. I was just lost. Right. And so for me, when I got into medical school, it was like, okay, how am I going to afford to pay for this, even with scholarships? So that was a burden on my parents because then they had to give me money. And then once you make it through the program, you deal with microaggressions. I dealt with racism, sexism. So mm. it was a lot of stumbling, like a lot of figuring out who I am as a woman, especially mm. a black woman, navigating through mm. America and navigating through pretty much a field where there's not a lot of people that look like me. Of course. Mm -hmm. And that was in Atlanta? So it was between, I went to medical school at Washington University. Okay. So it was between um, Washington, Atlanta, and Jacksonville. Got it. Microaggression. Mm -hmm. What's microaggression? So microaggressions are the people that be like, oh, you know, you're really smart for a black girl or you know mm. what? You don't talk like a black girl. Those are microaggressions. It's like backhanded compliments in the sense. So I would receive a lot of that or wow, are you the only person in your family that's a doctor or you're the only person in your family mm, that's educated? Or, you did mean. you get here through affirmative action? What? So, <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, it, it, you would be surprised at... And some people are just ignorant and they truly don't know um, and they're not taught. This is what they're raised with these sort of perceptions mm -hmm. or misconceptions. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's that's what I mean. We don't have a lot of black doctors in America. I think it's only two to four percent of black women are doctors mm -hmm. in America. And you're one of the youngest, too, right? Like, yeah, I graduated at thirty three, thirty four, thirty three, thirty four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes. Wow. Well, congrats. That's Thank amazing. Thank you. So Thank what you. kind of advice, if someone's trying to go the similar route that you took and they have to go through the microaggression of people coming at them sideways, mm -hmm. how do you like, how did you overcome that? Like, did you just not pay it no mind or mm -hmm. did you snap back or did you just like, you know, I'm gonna let God deal with it? A mixture of things, because one, I feel like you have to have thick skin. It, you know, being an entrepreneurship, you're gonna have hurdles, you're gonna have a lot going on. So one, having thick skin, and two, really just faith. Like mm -hmm. my faith and my support system, you have to have a good support system, right. being able to vent, going to therapy myself to yeah. work through things. Yeah. But I think for me, I always knew what the bigger picture was, right? Like I'm doing this not only for me, I'm doing it for my family, I'm doing it for younger kids that mm -hmm. might look up to me. I'm doing it for, so it, it was never just about me. It was about what I wanted to lead. I gotcha. And for me, that was what kept me. Whenever I felt like, okay, you know what? Why am I even doing this? I want to give up. I could just be a housewife. 
Uh, those are one what of the, some of the things. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I still want to do that. I ain't gonna lie, but, <laughs> but you know, so that's kind of what led me through. Definitely faith. Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. So, what motivates you? Like, you've already accomplished a lot. What gets you up in the morning? What keeps you going? What What inspires you to become who you are today? You know what? I'm very passionate about giving back and helping. And so I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, in the black community, therapy is taboo. Have you ever been to therapy? Nah, nah. You know what? I'd be feeling like I don't need it because oh. I, for one, I kind of think I already know everything, not mm -hmm. everything, but a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with me, I'm, I'm very spiritual and I listen to a lot of spiritual books, audio books. So I can kind of right. resort, resort to that. If something's not moving right, I know it's because I'm not aligning myself with the right. spiritual laws of the universe mm -hmm. and my karma and I need to check my karma what's going on in my life but then also there's a law of rhythm where we all have ups and downs as well absolutely I do agree with that but I feel like you can add on therapy to that mm. and see your process your line of thinking is good but a lot of people in our community they don't believe in therapy they're like yeah. oh I'm gonna give it to God I'm, which is great do all of those things right but we have a lot of mental illness and mental health, you know, stigmas in our community. And a lot of times we're not doing anything about it, mm. but praying. We're not looking at our diet. We're not looking at our, our own behaviors. We're not looking at our past traumas. We're not looking at the patterns that our parents have created for us. Yeah. So it's a mixture of things. And even in my own family, I saw a lot of mental health problems. Mm. And I said, you know what? This is where I need it. Like, I literally felt like I prayed about it, mm. and God was like, this is your calling. And if I could do it for free, I would. Mm. If I didn't have bills to pay, I would do it for free. <laughs> right. It's something that I would literally do for free because I love it so I much. Never, I never really thought about it. Because my thing also, I'd be like, if I, I go get therapy, what if the person that's giving me the therapy is more messed up than I am? <laughs> Uh, who's giving the therapist therapy? <laughs> no, you know? no, but we do. Like, I have a grand therapist. I am a psychiatrist. I do therapy. I do marriage counseling. I do trauma-based counseling. I do a mixture of things. But I have somebody I go see myself, and I think I'm a pretty level-headed, logical person 75% yeah. of the time. Yeah. But that other percentage, you know, I sometimes need guidance. So I think that's where mentors come in, and that's how I see my therapist. She's like a mentor. Mm. You know, she's a woman that I kind of, I don't want to say aspire to be like, but she provides a treatment plan that I can follow. Mm. And so I think that's what's important. We can read books and we can watch documentaries and you can learn from those things, but I think the difference is with therapy, you have a treatment plan. And you have somebody to hold you accountable besides your friends. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. I may look into it. Then. Yeah, you should. I'll send some people your way. <laughs> <laughs> Are they expensive? Are, is therapy expensive? You know, that is such a good question. No one's ever asked me that question. It can be. I'm going to be honest. Um, and that's why I tell people, people there's tiers, right? So for people that are interested in therapy, one of the things you would want to do is maybe start with um, a licensed mental health counselor. Okay. And they're typically, they can charge anywhere from 30 to maybe 70 an hour. And then go to a psychologist. Mm. Um, they're going to charge a little bit more. Psychiatrists, we are kind of the most expensive, mm. anywhere from 100 and up per hour and that's really only if you want medication mm. so I tell people do your research and then there's so many programs out there for men and women that will do either free therapy offer free therapy or they'll at, offer it at a sliding scale which is great too mm. so if there's any programs that people need they can definitely reach out to me and I'm always helping to find resources for individuals perfect and how can people find you before we get in even more deeper? Just go into what, accelerated clinical trials? Yes, accelerated clinical mm -hmm. trials. Well, if you're interested in mental health studies, I um, am co-founder and part owner of Accelerated Clinical Trials, and our website is acceleratedtrials.org. Um, and this, they are medicated studies, so you would have to take medication. So this is for individuals that want medication and need medication. Okay. But if you're interested in therapy, um, you can find me at Dr. Canary, that's DR dot c-a-n-a-r and i can provide resources and i'm also at dr mbs.com okay that's it all right doctor 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 I know. so what if i want some fentanyl you can hook me up oh my gosh <laughs> I don't let's even, not even talk I don't even about know what that fentanyl, fentanyl is. i just crisis. heard like bad stuff about yeah you know it's it's really and the sad part is it's affecting like it's really not a laughing matter. We shouldn't be laughing about it, but it's really affecting like teenagers. Mm. So it's a drug that is highly addictive. It's almost like, think of like crack cocaine. Mm. Yeah. 
So it is, it's definitely like, it's a huge epidemic. And actually the facility that we're in right now, Murray Medical, yeah. they assist with that. So if people do have drug addiction, um, you can definitely check out Murray Medical here and in Atlanta, Georgia. So is it like, cause of what Kanye West was addicted to opium or something, right? So what's opium? I think he was addicted to opo opioids. Op opioids. Yeah, that's a different, and you gotta remember too, um, is any that a drug, it, it's different. It uh -huh. is different. But any drug can really be addictive. There's people that are addicted to morphine. There's people that are addicted to all different types of drugs. Mm. So it depends on that individual's body. Mm. Everybody's body is a little bit different. Yeah. And so that's why even painkiller medication, I don't remember, know if you remember, I mean, this is still happening. But a couple of years ago, it was a huge epidemic where doctors were giving out pain medication like it was candy and people were becoming addicted to that. Mm. So, yeah, you definitely have to be mindful of what you're putting in your body. As physicians, we're still humans. We can make mistakes. Do your own research for yourself. I feel like it's always going to be another virus or another something that comes out. And it's always going to be another drug that comes out probably every year. It's kind of like a new car. It's the new, this the new. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, anyway, but we ain't going to dive true. deep into that. That is true, you know, that is true. We're going to get out of that. But I did want to touch on, I know you mentioned you was working with serial killers. <laughs> Yes, because we were talking about, um, you were asking me, you were like, why don't I use my real name on social media? And so a couple years ago, about three years ago, I was working with serial killers and murderers in the psychiatric ward. Wow. And so that's one of the reasons why I started using Dr. Canary was because I had some like stalker situations. Wow. Where people were trying to like follow me home. And yeah, it was, it got a bit wild. So that's where Dr. Canary comes from. Was you, you, you wasn't scared to take that position because you're a beautiful, attractive woman. So if you're going to see these people who have done these you know wrongdoings mm -hmm. murders and that what that didn't scare you it didn't you know what when I was a little girl I used to be the one watching like people under the stairs and Chucky and people Candy under the stairs Man. Is my movie, that yeah. was my movie <laughs> I, know, I right. watched that actually not too long ago <laughs> right. so for me I, I don't it, it didn't scare me and mm. it was always intriguing to me um, to to kind of be able to explore people's minds and figure out what makes them tick yeah. or why they have this kind of thirst to kill other people, mm. innocent people. So that is something that it, w it was intriguing to me. And I was I just felt like this is an amazing opportunity to figure these things out. Did you notice a commonality between these these different people that you interviewed or mm. you, you seen the prescribed treatment with? Did you see anything that was in common that all the people can look for in the future, like say that you, somebody may not be a serial killer yet, but mm -hmm. they may be one day. Cause the day I was at my house and um, I seen on Facebook, a guy had got out of, he had, he went to prison for murdering his wife. And then, oh. and she was pregnant. And he got out 16 years later, got with another lady and he had two kids by her and he ended up murdering, the lady had four kids total. He ended up murdering not only his two kids, her two kids, I mean, the other guy, two kids as well. So all four of his wife's kids, and he, you know, duct tape her and cut her face, but he, he, she survived. So, like, <clears throat> is there any advice, like, how can we see, foresee that, or what did you learn from interviewing these people? So I'm going to be honest, like sometimes, wow, first of all, that's sad. Like yeah, I did sad. not hear about that, no, um, yeah. but I don't really watch the news either. So there's yeah, that. Yeah, they popped up on Facebook. Um, but one thing that I, I do learn is like people fail to trust their intuition. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the serial killers or, or murderers that I dealt with, they would say that um, before a woman or a man came with them to wherever they were going to take them to kidnap them, a lot of times they would see like this kind of fear in their eyes or something in the other person's body, could you could tell that they were uncomfortable mm. and they would ignore it every single time. Mm. Now, in her case, I wonder if she ever knew about his previous history, right? Because 16 yeah, years is did. a long time they did. to go was, to jail. Because they was helping him get out of jail. Okay. Her, her oh. dad was a pastor and oh. he was helping him because he was going okay. to his, his church before he got locked up. Okay, I see. Yeah. And so I think that sometimes you do have to use people's history against them, right? Mm. Or dig deeper because people right. can change. Yeah. But when you have that type of offense, that's something deeper and psychological. And so a lot of things too is looking into people's childhood. A lot of the stuff with these serial killers, and there's less serial killers now because this is more of like something that it was, a, uh, I don't want to say epidemic, but it's 
there were more serial killers in the 80s and 90s. Now with technology going oh, yeah. into 2000s, it's even less. But America actually still has the highest number out of all the countries in the world. We have the most serial killers. Mm. So it shows you people are ticking left and right in America. Mental health is not being taken seriously here. Mm. So people feel like they have no choice but to have some sort of means of expression, but they're choosing the negative means That's of expression than the positive. Right. That is a release for them. Mm. And people's childhood has a lot to do with it as well. If you look at um, John Gacy or Jeffrey Dahmer, a lot of the really popular ones in America, a lot of them had like very troubled childhoods. Mm -hmm. So that is something that people have to take into account as well. You need a... Uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, I've, I've seen Jeffrey Dahmer. It was... I didn't even watch you it. You didn't watch it? No, because I did a thesis on him when I was in college. So I know all about him. And, you know, he was going after minority men. Mm -hmm. And so, and the police were not paying any attention to that. So, mm. to see that all over again just really ticks me off. So, I, don't want, I didn't watch yeah, it. Yeah, it, it was crazy. I mean, it, it was, I'm sure a lot of people out there watched it. It, it was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. I, that's all I can say. And a lot of those people are still alive. Like, the family members and everything are mm -hmm. still living to this day. Mm -hmm. So, for them to have to relive mm -hmm. that and rehash it, mm, that's okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. So anything to, to, so to try to avoid that, you got to just watch out for these people's childhoods, find out about their childhood, find out um, what kind of advice, though, that you can give anyone to just try to stay away from it. Or is there anything that they have in common, because I don't think we ever answer that, mm -hmm. that you noticed a pattern from all these people or they just... Just one day they just wake up and want to kill somebody. No, everyone was a little bit different. But what I will say is that a lot of them did live actually very regular lives. Mm. Like had families, had wives, had girlfriends. Um, and extremely intelligent too. Mm -hmm. All of them had like high IQs because we do IQ tests. I would say that those there's always red flags. And I think that for the people that married them or were dating them, they overlook them, right? Because you can go out on a date with somebody and be like, this person's a little peculiar or they're a little odd, um, or they can mask it really well. Mm. So all of them honestly were able to, had very vibrant personalities. Like meeting them on the street, you would never know, right? Mm -hmm. But it's always like the little things, like they like certain things organized in a certain way. And if mm. you, if it's unorganized, they're gonna like go completely off. Mm. You know, so there's always just small little things that you can pinpoint and say, you know what, this isn't quite normal. It's mostly men, it's not women. You don't really see it in women, right? Most serial killers. Oh, women. okay, got it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get off the, the, the serial killers, uh, but I appreciate the outlook on that. You're welcome. Uh, so let's talk about the sex therapy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so any any <laughs> advice, Besides prescribing the guys blue pills that, mm. that men can do right. if they have erectile dysfunction or if the passion is not in a relationship anymore. What yeah. kind of advice can you give people just, you know, briefly? I know you're not getting paid to tell them, <laughs> <laughs> but what kind of advice that you can give someone to spice up their relationship mm. if they're in a relationship or on, on sex since you're the expert? I would say, you know, intimacy is the number one thing, right? Okay. Um, and what I've learned starting with the blue pill Viagra is that younger and younger, we're starting to have to prescribe men Viagra. I have clients as young as like 29 coming to me needing Viagra pills, mm. which is crazy because it's really started for people 50s and up, 60s and up, I would say. Mm. And so I think diet is the number one thing for a lot of males. Okay. Um, so when they come to me, I'm like, before we prescribe you Viagra, let's look at your diet. You're doing hookah, you're smoking marijuana, you're drinking every single weekend. Mm. Yeah, you're not, you're not healthy. eating healthy, canned food, processed foods. Yeah. And a lot of times we have to look at the foods we're eating. That's really the number one thing across the board with anything. Yeah. If you're overweight, if you have diabetes, if you have heart failure, if you have erectile dysfunction, if you have vaginal dryness. Well, vaginal dryness is a bit tricky. Mm. But across the board, it's diet. Mm. Diet changes everything. Drinking alkaline water mm. instead of purified. You know, looking at cutting out the processed foods, cutting out all the salts. Mm. And a lot of this knowledge is really on online. So, yeah, it's on yeah. it's online. You can find it if you, you want to. You can really find yeah. it if you want and look into holistic methods. Now when it comes to the sex aspect, 
I always like to bring up intimacy, but before sex, there needs to be intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're building a bond with your partner and connecting. And I feel like this generation, we've lost that because mm -hmm. the grass always feels greener on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants what they don't have. And so when they come to me, we do a lot of exercises that reconnects them, whether it's cooking together, whether it's giving somebody a massage, whether it's going out on dates. I'm really focused on let's reconnecting. Let's asking the difficult questions that we don't typically ask of one another and putting our cell phones away. Because I know in a lot of relationships, we're just always on social media, we're always mm -hmm. handling business. And as a woman entrepreneur, even I myself have struggled with those things. Yeah. I'll make sure I didn't touch my finger. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally touched the speaker. No, I got so you. that's really important to make sure that we're tapping back into each other. In intimacy. Mm -hmm. And intimacy. Like intimacy then needs to come to sex. Got it. It's so like Trey Song said, oh. sex ain't better than love, all right? Well, yeah, he makes a good point. <laughs> he makes a good point. Oh, yeah, shout out to Trey Songs, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. Did you sell him house, too? No, nah, I didn't sell him house. We do got the same name, though. Tremaine. Oh, His name yeah, Tremaine, my name Tremaine. Tremaine but, yes, okay. Yeah, but uh, that that is that is true. I can understand that. All right, so what are some of your dreams that you haven't accomplished yet. Do you have any more Ooh, big yes. dreams that you haven't accomplished? Uh, you know, I do. we got to dream big, yeah, always. Course, we used to talk about that, dream big, big, big. Um, there are, starting a family is definitely like number one on the list for me. That's probably like for most women, right? Well, I don't yeah. know about these women these days. Oh, but, don't say that. Yeah, but, I think, you know what, society has made being a mom seem like not as, beautiful as it is and it is it's a lot of hard work so we have to be honest about that but i definitely that's something i want to be a mom mm -hmm. hopefully next year okay um right. speaking into existence speaking it into existence i want to buy a building for accelerated okay. so that's definitely something that we're working on and i really want to grow we want to be a staple here in the community okay. so definitely doing outreach we just got started literally september 2023 okay. was when we secured our first contract nice. so i definitely cannot wait to start planting roots in here because right now we're the only black owned clinical trial company here in Atlanta. Really? Where it's co-founder, um, founder, wow. my business partner, Alexis Melson, she is the founder of Accelerated. Mm. Um, and even our medical chief operator is a black male. Nice. So yeah, we're, we're trying, we're doing what we can. You're doing amazing. So one of your dreams is to have a family. Have a family. Be a mother. Be a mom. Anything else? Buy a building for Accelerated and then do more outreach in the community. So I really just want to build this to where we can do mentorship programs and then possibly expand it to different states as well. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You'll do it. I'm going to be selling you that building, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, of course. All right, cool. Of course. I got you. All right, so let's see. Next we got, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know what that is. Hey, you got oh, chicken scratching. I right? know. I was writing it on the plane. You write like a doctor. Uh, you know, I, I actually am a doctor. Oh, okay. I just never went to school for it. Gotcha. Yeah, That's so. what most people think. <laughs> 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 what do you feel? All right, so this is going to be our last question about business and mm. spiritual, and then we're going to get into a relationship talk. Okay. All right. What do you feel your true purpose is in life? What do you feel like you was put here for? Oh, that's so good. Do you know? You know what? I do know. I feel like I was put on earth to educate my community. Mm -hmm. um, I was put on this earth to the generation behind me that wants to be doctors to help them up because I had help, right? Mm -hmm. I had people when I was in medical school giving me money, giving me advice. One of the persons that I started the business with, he was my mentor in medical school. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Dr. Daryl Murray here in Atlanta that owns Murray Medical, he has been an amazing contributor to my success. Nice. Um, and he helped us fund the company. Oh, <laughs> so wow. we didn't have to invest out. We invested in-house. Good job, Dr. Murray. Yes. Yeah, so that is something that I would then like to do for somebody else. Got so it. I think I was put on this earth, not only just to inspire, to educate, but to, to really give back to my community. Nice. And I think that's the... You can't have the next generation of realtors, of doctors, of anything if you don't help somebody get up. I agree 100%. And Absolutely. that's how you receive more blessings in life, too. That you is know? how you receive more blessings in and life, I, by giving. And I think that's the true purpose in life is to help others. You know, Absolutely. we get so selfish and caught up in me, me, me. 
and you forget that to really re to receive your true blessings and to be your happiest is by helping others. Yeah. That's what I, uh, I agree on. I agree with that. Do you have, oh, I meant to ask you, do you have any morals or codes that you live by? You know, it's really simple. I've realized that just doing right by others, like I, I believe in karma. I think what goes around can definitely come around, mm -hmm. even if it's not in the same way that you gave it out. Right. So one thing is I try and do right by people. I just, yeah. I, every day I just try and be a good person. Exactly. And sometimes it can be hard because I know when I'm in traffic, <laughs> I am not the best person. I'm telling you. <laughs> because these Atlanta drivers get on my nerves. But I will say that like I've, I've had to learn to relax. Yeah. You know, as entrepreneurs, we're constantly busy. It's go, 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 go. I've had to learn to take time for myself, and I've had to learn to put my mental health first. And it's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. So that's something I learned. So, you know, taking care of yourself, making sure that you're a priority, I think is really important. It's key in perfect. anything. Got it. A hundred percent. All right, perfect. So now we're going to move on to personal life. Okay. All right, so... <laughs> Are you married, single, in a relationship? I am in a relationship. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. How long? How long have we been? Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what's our anniversary <laughs> year? Uh, we've been together, not even a year yet. Not Almost a year. a year. Almost a year. But I've known him for over a year. Okay. Uh, we were friends first. Okay. And I wasn't even looking to get into a relationship. I was, like, focused on my business, and he just snuck his way in and... Cracked my little won, heart. Won over. Yeah, he really did. He won me over. He's a great guy. So Got it. that's my partner. So so for people, because <clears throat> the dating in Atlanta, dating is tough. I don't know if I agree with that. Really? I don't know if I agree with it. Well, why is it because you'd be working all the time? Because you you wasn't really dating anyway, right? I but no, not before him. But it wasn't because I just wasn't focused on. This is what I think. I think that. I love, I love when people say what you put out is what you get, but that's not always true, right? Mm -hmm. What I've learned is people don't look at the red flags and the green flags in a relationship or on dates. Mm -hmm. I've had so many friends that went out on a date with a guy and would list all these things about him, but then they went on a second date with him. Why are mm -hmm. you wasting your time? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes, like, are you desperate to be in a relationship? Or are you really digging deep and saying, okay, I know I want to get married. Is this person going to fit into my life? Mm -hmm. And can I add substance to their life? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, such as women, we Oh, tend as a woman, you say, can you add substance to his life? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah, as a woman, you should want, we are a helpmate, right? <laughs> but I, I, so. I, I, my parents were married for 35 years. Okay. So, or they are married still to this day for 35 years. Mm -hmm. So I saw a different dynamic and perspective um, so for me, I feel like I have to add substance to my husband as well. And most successful business women and men are married, especially for men. Mm. Men, most multimillionaires, billionaires that you can think of. They might have got five divorces, mm. but they were married building their company. Mm. Interesting. I'm thinking, I'm contemplating that. Yeah, you, know? you need to get it together. I, I mean, my thing is there's too many options. and. I don't have time to try to get to know all these girls and take all these girls out on dates. And the first thing they say now is, we where are you taking me? For the love of Trey. Let's start a show. For the love of Trey. <laughs> Let me host that for you. For the love of Trey. You know, someone else had approached me about that. <laughs> um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what it holds in the future because I do want the right one. And then I'm not a gambler. Okay. As a man, we really going to give everything to the woman. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to support her, give her time, energy, money, our heart. Right. And she can break it at any time. So I'm I don't I don't be really want to gamble my heart like that. And I know I came across some great women, but um You have told me about some great women. I feel like you fumbled. I possibly have. Mm -hmm. I possibly have. But at the same time, I'm also focused on being the most successful I can possibly be. Right. As far as the relationship life, how do you compare that to the single life? I know you are already, you know, trying to level yourself up being mm -hmm. single. Do you feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulder now that you're in a relationship? Or do you feel like we're all meant to be in a relationship? Like, what do, what's your advice on I'm that? I'm going to back it up by science, right? Because I can okay. state my opinion. But s science shows that human beings need interaction with other human beings, right? And right. that we need love to survive. Mm. And so one of the things that you can be successful and then you can be lonely. Mm -hmm. Or you can be successful and decide, you know what, 
I want to be in a partnership. And it's different for everybody because I work with so many different types of couples. Yeah. I've seen a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, but what was important to me was like family. So I had decided, you know what, when I was single, I was like, I have to put time and effort into dating mm -hmm. because it's not easy. Atlanta's mm -hmm. a fun city, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You know out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. a fun city. Right. So dating actually takes work. It does. You have to have a plan for dating. Yeah. And then when you're dating, are you dating with purpose? Am I dating for a free meal? Mm -hmm. Which I have done in the past. Oh my gosh. I love to eat. <laughs> I can't help it. Every woman but, loves to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm dating with intent, then I need to, for me, what worked was just dating one guy at a time yeah. and getting to know. Now, I would start off maybe with a little roster, mm -hmm. you know, just a little basketball you roster, to, not right? football. I mean, because you got to keep your options open and yeah, know you which one keep the right and one. Know, so I would go on first dates and then I started to eliminate from there. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't want kids? That's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, he got too many kids? That's okay. Oh, he doesn't have a plan for the future? That's okay. He doesn't want to be married because some men don't. They'll be like, oh, I don't know. I already knew I needed a man that yeah. knew he wanted to be married. Well, look, let me stop you, though, because it's easy for a woman to do that because y'all ain't paying for that when y'all going out on these dates. I take men. I trick off on my men. Stop it. You're I not do. taking no men, maybe on your man, but on dates, oh, first dates, but none no, of no, that. No, no, no. I will say, all jokes aside, I do usually I'm not, I'm not paying for the first date of course maybe. i'm not maybe paying for the second date but i'll exactly. pay for the third date okay so let me the go back to date, my point what i was gonna make date. because third date that's that's beyond that's cool and mm -hmm. that's cool and all but for us as men mm -hmm. we got to be out here with these women on these first dates it's expensive it, people it in atlanta expensive. they said the average oh, is 120. oh no that's cheap that's broke yeah. that's that's, oh, that's broke bro. dining the average, oh I would say, if I'm out on a date with someone, it's going to be either worth from t anywhere from two to $300 because you got to get hookah, you got to get drinks. Unless the woman don't drink or smoke okay. hookah, uh -huh. then Maybe you can be at like 100 okay. 120 Yeah, they said the average in Atlanta is like 120 a date. That's with no drinks and hookah. Is it really? No, it, it is. You don't take them to happy hour? Get the free Oh, you know I'll what? I would be a cheap guy. If I was a man, I'd be so cheap. But look, <laughs> then as a woman, you're going to be like, this, this bozo is cheap. <laughs> Because women are very materialistic. So look, we no, gotta. No, we're not materialistic. Don't say that. So look, not we gotta we gotta sit out here and try to take these women out. And guess mm -hmm. what? The first thing they said, mm -hmm. where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? Plan it. They want a man to sit here and plan it, which I understand. Planning that's cool. That's attractive to a woman. Right. But we, a busy man, is working. Mm -hmm. We gotta deal with our clients already. Then you want us to turn around, and see. You and know try what? To plan. But maybe you're not dating the woman for you because. I've always appreciated creativity in my dates. Like, I've had guys take me hiking. I've had guys take me to the shooting range. Those were some of the best dates I had because but, they were creative. But you're not the typical woman. But there's either. a lot of non-typical women out here. You guys just aren't attracted to them. Those aren't the women no, that you it, want. It, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. It's, it's the, the, all right. I could hook you up with Big, Big Bertha right now. Every woman wants to go eat. And she going to cook for you. <laughs> I don't want no BBW. <laughs> <laughs> Every woman is going to say, where are you taking me? Where are we going? All right. Okay. And it's, and even if you go do a fun activity, they're still going to get hungry out there. Yeah, All right. Absolutely. Which is nothing wrong with that, but it's just when it's so many. And then when you, as a, as a man, as a successful man, when you go out on these dates, you see that this woman really don't have a lot to offer. And okay. you see that her mental or her spiritual or her emotional or her intellectual is not all the way there. Mm -hmm. And then you be like, man, what the hell? Why am I sitting here wasting my time? When I'm bringing everything and she can't even, she don't even have goals. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Which, it's a fault on the man, um, because we don't really sit there and talk on the phone with nobody like that no right. more. Right. It'd be DMs and yeah, texts. Yeah, DMs and texts. So you don't really know really what's going on. And like, all right, I want to see you. Let's go out, whatever. But for me, I kind of really just put an end to the dating stuff. It's dating. That's why intention, right? Ask these questions. I tell men, ask questions before you take a woman out. Yeah. Y'all don't. Y'all just see a pretty face and say, I want to take you out. But sometimes, though, for us men, we may just want to have sex with a woman. That's true, too. And that's why Atlanta has one of the highest <laughs> <laughs> HIV and STD rates. Uh, damn. Well, we are I mean, top 10. I mean, well, Sexually transmitted diseases, we are top 10 in the U.S. I think that's in any major city that's popping, like even Miami, right? And they yeah, one of them even my, yeah. in LA, I'm in sure. LA, yes. New York, I'm sure. Oh, yep, all I mean, those. because it's heavily populated areas. Right. So. But that's showing that sex has become is become valueless. Mm. We're not to nowadays sex. We talk about sex so much. Everything is about sex. Sex on the first date. Sex on the, whenever you choose to have sex, you're grown. But 
you're not looking at, you know, we've talked a lot about spiritual right before right, outside right. of this. And so there's a spiritual connection when you have sex. Mm. And if you believe in karma, you believe in a spiritual world or a spiritual, spiritual realm, excuse me, then you have to realize how valuable, even with you, with what you got, your anatomy, sperm retention and things like that, it's important to mm -hmm. not just give your body to just anybody. I 100% agree. And we don't do that. I 100% agree. But you know what also, the music, the way women dress nowadays. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. I, yeah. The fake bodies, like it's look and Instagram, it's like you're looking at soft porn on a daily. Women busting all out, the clothes. Well, they think that they that's what men want to see, and that is what some men want to see. I mean, we like to see it. I ain't going to lie like we don't like to see it, right. but... You don't want your wife... No, nah, you can tone it down. You can still be beautiful and sexy without doing all that. You know, you can still wear something nice and biz uh, casual and business savvy, but, you know, if it's a club night, we want to see it, but we don't want to see it. Put it it's like you. a catch-22. Yes, it, I know. It's definitely a catch-22. <clears throat> all right. So, well, we almost done here. Um, what kind of advice could you give I want to talk about marriage but you're not married yet nope not so, yet so you can't you've never been married mm -mm. not yet just engaged just engaged oh what happened to that he passed away oh I'm yeah this was like that. in my mid-20s so oh wow yeah. so you were supposed to be married a long time I would have been married at 24 I was 24 or 25 when he proposed oh wow mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that yeah I was a baby so I want you to give women advice before we close out it's been a great a great episode. I've enjoyed it. What should a woman, mm -hmm. because that is, you know, you hear all these conversations online about what value does a woman bring to a man. Yeah, we, I feel like if you even have that conversation or you have to ask a woman what value she brings to you, then you're not with the right woman. Well, we're just talking just in general right okay. now. Okay. What value, in your opinion, as a black woman, mm -hmm. should a woman bring to the man, and and before you even say something, I've I've asked the woman what value does she bring, and the woman said, "Well, I look good," <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And I was waiting for her to say some more. I, like it was like a minute pause. Right, you was like, "Oh, that's, like, that's it." <laughs> so, because because I know as a man, I'm gonna bring security. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna provide you know everything a woman needs: attention, mm -hmm. love, gifts, happiness, all that, whatever, right. family. What? should, and, and I want you to tell this to the women out there, what should a woman, what value should a woman bring to that man? Well, I want to make a disclaimer. I think that it looks different for everybody, okay. I will say, because not, I, I've realized, and this is just in therapy or in general, and the research that I've done on relationships, we're kind of getting away from that traditional. I'm more so kind of on the traditional path. Um, so for me, and from what I've seen, like my mom handled the household, okay. you know, and that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. If my man, if I'm living with my man and I'm not paying rent, mm -hmm. and then he has to come home and he has to cook and he has to clean, he has to, yeah. what's the point of him having me, okay. right? And it's great to have maids and all those things, right? Because mm -hmm. when you are wealthy, time is very valuable, especially okay. as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. that's what I've learned. But I feel like as a woman, we are you guys' backbone. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why, I, like I said earlier, most successful men, all the multimillionaires, billionaires, no matter how many times they got in a divorce, they find them a woman. Mm -hmm. Right. Look at Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. He is engaged again. I mean, he can easily be engaged. He can just buy somebody. But the thing is, he realized <laughs> now he can buy. But the woman he's with is very <laughs> successful. She has her own. OK. Yeah, she has her own. Nice. Um, but you see that he has a woman by his side. Mm -hmm. So we're the helpmate. We, we're you all's backbone. Wherever you're lacking, we should be being able to provide that okay. extra, whether it's advice, whether it's women are great at business. Mm -hmm. We can typically see the big picture, right? Where you guys are very skilled at maybe logic and looking at, okay, numbers. We can see the bigger picture. Hey, maybe you shouldn't do business with that person. Mm -hmm. And then we're supposed to take care of the home. Okay. Like kids naturally just gravitate towards their mom. You know, you can be an amazing father, but kids are going to gravitate usually towards their mom. Oh, yeah. So we provide that extra loving, you know, supportive background. So it's like men and women need each other. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of hearing these podcasts where, oh, I don't need a man or I don't need a woman and I'm better off. Like we need each other, not even just from a traditional standpoint, but from even a science standpoint, yeah. men and women need each other. So in the beginning, we, we understand you say cooking and cleaning and helping mm -hmm. with the business. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly fine, but that's mm -hmm. not going to be in the beginning. 
is there anything the woman should be doing in the beginning? Because the man is going to be doing everything he's supposed to do <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> but I still feel like there's ways that you can show through conversation. Okay. That and even it's the little things though. Like when I first started dating my boyfriend. I remember we had just started dating, right? And mm -hmm. I just wanted to show him that I was appreciative and didn't even really know him that long. But I just wanted, I was like, I just want to show him something that I'm thinking about him. Mm -hmm. He went out with some friends and I just sent drinks for them. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was no more than probably like 50 bucks. See, that's amazing. And, or I pay for his haircuts. So oh, I wow. think as women, like, it's okay to show a guy that you're interested. Mm -hmm. So I'm not coming over. I'm If I've only known you for a month or two, I'm not coming over to cook and clean and do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not doing all that. But I'll do things like, you know what? He's taking me out on dates. Let me just send him some money for him to get his hair cut. Mm -hmm. Or let me pay for the drinks when him and his friends go watch football. Or let me watch football with him and show and interest in, in his beginning. team. Yeah, these are little things I feel oh, like that wow. you can just do in the beginning to see, show la him. Ladies, that's... See, yeah. and the but good you thing have to listen. That's the thing. You have to see what your partner his needs and wants are mm -hmm. it could be something as simple as a planner yeah like hey i know he's unorganized let me get him something from amazon to organize his life whether it's a planner whether it's a set you just got to listen and i feel like we're not listening to one another we're communicating sometimes but we're not comprehending we're not taking in the information that our partner is saving for us and not taking action there got you it. go because in my experience the woman just want to sit there and just be given to have everything given to without you've dated some good women so you, you know I, I try to stay away from the dates to be honest because i done dated when i was broke and i done dated when i had money mm -hmm. and what's the difference for you it really be the same shit really yeah for the most part i don't know if it's the ones i'm choosing but it's the ones you're choosing but i also don't be taking a lot of women out on dates because it's like i said it's too many and mm -hmm. i don't really be caring to do it so i don't know it's just it's just too many maybe it's my fault for being so handsome you know, and being so successful. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, nah, anyway, I, I don't have no issues with women. I love women. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I appreciate a woman and I want the right woman. I just, I just like the little things, what you just said, mm -hmm. when a woman does stuff like that, that shows a man that, okay, she just not, she just ain't here for my money. Well, tell the ladies what they can do. You as a man, from your perspective, was something small that you've gotten that you was like, cause you have money now, right? Yeah, of course. So you don't need that. So explain to women, like, what's something small that was, like, sentimental to you that a woman did for you once? Give them some ideas, too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can really tell a woman exactly what she should be doing. But who wants to do that? You know, it's, it's, it's like no, telling a man want, right. that, what he's supposed to do. Right. So it's like I could tell a woman exactly what needs to be done. E even if you're out on a date and the, and the woman offer to just say, I'm going to take care of the tip. Mm. I'm going to still tell her, no, I got it. Right. But, but just that, that, that thought of her offering, just yes. like, oh, wow, she's not, you know, she's anything. I, in my opinion, I just think a woman should just show any effort to show that she's just not there for the guy's money. Love if it. she show any effort, it could be the smallest gesture, like mm. you said, a haircut or that way a man knows that, like, look, I'm not going to just spend my money. I'm, I don't have a gold digger. Right. Because it's, it those be out there. Like you just said, you was going out there for free meals. I was a foodie dater. That was a long time ago, though. Right, but look. But I was women, broke. But you know, women, <laughs> women, but women, women I, I do that, I to so. survive. <laughs> I need the food. I need the sustenance to go to school. But women do that, though, No, right? women do. I actually did so, a whole video about on that on my mind, body, sex about women. <laughs> foodie dates is what we call them. Exactly, and I don't like to be played for. You don't want to sponsor nobody for their food. Okay, I, I mean, I, I, the right woman. Okay. I want to spend on the one that's gonna be in my life. Like I she can get you. whatever, but I don't want to go. I don't want to go through the process of trying to find it. Understood. That's and the right one could be right up under my nose, but my ass so stubborn and very much so. So straightforward about my business that I don't really be paying no attention. You gotta find. It's gotta be a balance, though. You, like you have to make it a priority. I think when I get in these multi-millions, then mm -hmm. I'll make it a priority. Because okay, right now I don't have multi-millions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's going to be my stability. Mm -hmm. So now I'm secure. Right. I'm fully, I fully know who I am. A woman can come. I, she ain't got to do nothing. You mm -hmm. know, which she ain't got to do nothing right now. But at that point, it's really nothing. We can go anywhere, do whatever. And that's my one of my goals okay. that I mm -hmm. haven't achieved yet. Multi-million. Multi. It's Nothing coming. Nothing that's holding me back. It's coming. But yeah, it's coming. It's coming. So <clears throat> we have actually discussed everything. Yes. Uh, any advice for any young girls that want to be a psychiatrist? Um, I would say get a mentor okay. and do your research. Know that it's what you truly want. Um, had I known, I wouldn't have got a master's because I feel like I was... 
Ah. Yeah, so I think that the number one thing is to do your research, and there's so much information. When you and I were coming up, there was an Instagram too. We were like, what, in college? After yeah. college, maybe. Yeah. So I think that getting someone that's already in the field, I'm sure you've had mentors, um, that was probably a life-changing thing for me. That's why I'm where I'm at today with Accelerate is yeah. because I had mentors. And I listened. Okay. That's the thing. I think we get so caught up in our own ways and we're hard-headed. Be willing to listen and to learn. Mm -hmm. If you're the, like they say, if you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. Right. Can they reach out to you to be a mentor? You know, not yet. I was gonna say not yet, but you know what? I it's shouldn't do that. It's it's, it's definitely it's on the way. I okay. just feel like right now I'm so busy and I'm the type of person I'm all or nothing. Yeah. So I wanna I don't want to take on mentees and then I know I can't give hundred percent. And right now I already got mentees. But I am open if you do go to drmbs.com, um, you can email me and reach out if or I can link them to someone so i'm always here to help and provide resources if you are currently dealing with schizophrenia or depression um, we do have some studies coming up that are medicated studies so if you're interested uh, you can reach us at accelerated clinical or i'm sorry accelerated trials.org how do i not know the name of my <laughs> own research i'm a little schizophrenic <laughs> Boy, stop. <laughs> no, I'm just, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for being on of Maybach course, Conversations. Of Maybe course. next time we'll be in the Maybach action. <laughs> <laughs> it was pleasant. Thank you guys for tuning in with the beautiful Dr. Fuller. Make sure you guys come check her out if you need any evaluations. It's a black owned business, and they're doing a great job out here. All right, see you guys next time.